And we turn next to the Gulf of Mexico. Big news tonight, day 18 of that huge oil spill. That 100-ton containment dome has now been lowered onto the site of the blown-out well, 5,000 feet down in the ocean. They hope they can get the dome hooked up tomorrow, and if it works, by Sunday, it could start capturing 85 leaking out of the earth. But of course, it's too late for the oil that has already escaped and some barrier islands off the Louisiana coast where oil washed up today. And more fisheries were ordered closed. And over these 18 days, we have heard so much about the environment and the economy. Well, now tonight, for the first time, we're going to hear more about the workers on board that fiery rig, the survivors and their 11 co-workers who died. The men who made it off say the protections they were promised didn't work. Here's Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross. Many of the men and women had worked together on the Deepwater Horizon since it first arrived on station eight years ago, including crane operator Micah Sandell and Dwayne Martinez, who supervised the roustabouts. It's been a good rig, been a lot of good people. They worked 21 days on, 21 days off, in grueling 12-hour shifts, night and day, sending more than a mile's worth of pipe to the oil beds below. Don't be a scrub, put on your gloves when you be working. It was a close-knit group that even made their own rap music video shown on the company website about safety, keeping their hands free of injury on deck. These are the tools we've been given, my man, to stay incident-free all the time. The crew's safety relied on a device called a blowout preventer to send an alarm and cut off potentially dangerous discharges of oil or gas. They always tell us that we have safety devices and warnings and they got ways of shutting it in and don't seem like they had nothing. In fact, documents show that the government and rig operators, including Transocean, have long known that blowout preventers, BOPs, have a poor record of reliability. And now, sadly, this one has horribly not worked. And here we are, suffering the consequences. The explosion on the rig came without warning. Some survivors say the alarm that warns of blowouts failed or that someone turned it off. The men on the deck floor had no time to get to safety. It was people screaming and hollering and people jumping off the side. Everybody was scared to death. It was chaos. Martinez and Sandell made it to a lifeboat and then watched the fires burn, knowing their friends did not make it out, including, they say, Don Clark, and Steve Curtis and Jason Anderson. We knew where the guys were. We knew they were burning. We knew they weren't going to make it off there. I'm sorry I couldn't have done more. The fire was too hot. I just want to tell them I'm sorry and praying for them. The two survivors and others are now suing Transocean and BP over the failure of the blowout preventers. The companies say not as enough is known yet to answer the allegations, but a top federal official told the Associated Press today the government is now going to re-examine the reliability of those critical devices on the seabed floor, Diane. Uh, Crushing those stories, and the alarm did not sound. Did not sound. They feel guilty they survived. They watched their friends perish. Thanks to our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross.